Good afternoon. It's 12.27 p.m. on the 19th of April, 2024. Thank you for joining me. Today we'll be discussing the bowl judgments and the fall of Babylon. This is chapters 15 through 18 in Revelation. First, please join me in a moment of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for your many blessings. Please help us rightly divide the word of truth today, not to add or take away. We pray for your blessing on the lesson to see it as you breathed it. Please bless all those we love in our churches. Continue to lead us and guide us, and we pray to be in your will, Lord, in your name. Amen. Thank you for joining me again for the bold judgments and the fall of Babylon. Welcome to Introducing Eternal Life is Real. For the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Here's a good map of the Babylonian Empire I didn't show you before, and it shows Babylon's location. You see the Persian Gulf, where all the ships will be coming into Babylon doing trade, uh, particularly during the first half of tribulation, while uh, the Antichrist allows Babylon to flourish. And uh, the woman, the whore sitting on many waters, you see the Med, the Black Sea, the Caspian, the Persian, and none show it better than this one. Uh, if that's the extent of Babylonia they're showing there, I've seen other maps that show it goes all the way to the Black Sea. But yeah, I like seeing the Babylon's location there. Uh, it's on the Euphrates. And it's not only on many waters. It's like right where a branch of the river comes back into the main branch. And it's, it's like it's got water on every side. There are lakes near it. And then all these seas where it can. So anything that's, you know, going to be traded can be moved on water. Here we see what looks like an overland route to get to Babylon from Jerusalem to avoid the Arabian desert. Here we show you the Euphrates. You know, see where Kuwait is in the Persian Gulf. It comes up. This is the Tigris on the right. So Baghdad, we said earlier, was 85 to 55 miles. So that puts Babylonia right here, but about the between Babylon, between the A and the Q on that map. Revelation 1, 3 blesses he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. So we're already blessed and keep those things which are written therein. So we must be doers of the word to receive the blessing fully for the time is at hand. Jesus said he would come like a thief in the night or unannounced says uh, in 26, this is the lost doctrine of the kingdom uh, of the uh, kingdom of the priesthood of all believers. <laughs> That's a mouthful and I never get it out right. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be pri priests of God and of Christ. I like that. And again, here we see our Tribulation diagram are we have gone through the seven seals and the seven trumpets. Today we do the seven bowls. We just covered mid tribulation and we had covered chapter 12, the fall of evil separately, as well as Daniel in Revelation uh, before getting to mid tribulation. Um, so now we move on from mid tribulation. Let's do a bit of a review. You notice we've done the seals and the trumpets. This is the first half of tribulation here. The Antichrist, seven-year covenant sign with the mini. Then you get the red horse in the First World War or tribulation. Then the black horse or the famine. And then uh, death comes on his horse, the pale horse followed by Hades, one fourth of the earth is destroyed by sword, famine, starvation, and the beast of the earth, among which is the Antichrist, the beast that rises from the sea, the sea of the Gentiles. 
Then we have the fifth seal saints, those who were murdered in first half of tribulation for adhering to the faith. Uh, then we have second the great uh, earthquake. The sun goes black and the moon is blood in the second blackout or tribulation. The seventh seal is open and there's a pause. So our governmental system has been 10 kings. That's explained even further, but Daniel, you know, talks about it. The 144K are the evangelists of the tribulation. We have uh, the ministry of the two witnesses, most likely Moses and Elijah. And so during the first half of tribulation, the Antichrist has allowed Babylon to flourish and he has allowed Israel to rebuild the temple. The religious system is composed of the Thyatira element of the pagan Jezebel and uh, going in to the Roman Catholic Church and that being wed with today's uh, Protestant apostasy church, the Laodicean church it is called. And those two wed and form the false religious system of the Antichrist for the first half of tribulation. As we see in mid-tribulation, he, he gets tired of it and commits the abomination of desolation and sits on the throne as ruler himself. We see with the trumpets, the first one-third of dry earth is destroyed, one-third of salt water. Then the third, one-third of fresh water. And then the fourth, one-third of heavens. The day is shortened to 16 hours. The night as well. Then in the fifth, we have the third blackout. or the first invasions of demons to torment. The locust demons that can sting for five months but not kill. And people will see it. It is the first woe judgment. The second woe judgment are the ones that breathe fire, brimstone, and smoke. And uh, there's like 200 million uh this is a second invasion of demons to kill one third of humanity. And then uh, the seventh, seventh trumpet was announced later during as one of the events of mid tribulation. It is the third woe judgment because it opens all the bold judgments. So we saw mid tribulation, temporary cessation of judgments. Uh, the second world war, the antichrist is killed. At some point down there, Satan has already been cast down to earth long ago. Greater seed is in us than he that is in the world. We know this. Satan resurrects the Antichrist, who su subdues three kings or kills them. Seven submit, and the Antichrist becomes the eighth horn, as Daniel it clearly states in Daniel. And we have the destruction of the ecclesiastical Babylon. Because when the Antichrist sits on the throne and commits the abomination of desolation, he will be tired of all that religious system and he'll want them to just worship him. And so the beast that comes up out of the pit, we believe, also is the Antichrist because he had been slain by the sword. Uh, we will see. see we'll see later but anyway i believe the beast that comes up out of the pit later uh is the slain antichrist and satan the fallen angel is the one who allows him back out resurrecting him and he kills the two witnesses and gets everybody to worship him the false prophet comes and they create an image to the beast and get people to worship it and take the number making them no longer savable the seven-year covenant is broken at mid-tribulation of course at the abomination the worldwide persecution of jews continues to this day one only has to look at the news and during mid-tribulation the seventh trumpet is sounding announcing all the bold judgments and messiah's kingship over that which was claimed by the antichrist so God begins to take back from the earth that which is his. And so we roll on to the 15th chapter. Chapter. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues. 
for in them is filled up with the wrath of God. This chapter is a preparation to the pouring out of the seven vials or seven bowls. It contains a vision of seven angels in heaven that should do this. There's also a chorus of harpers on this occasion. The vision of the seven angels having the seven last plagues is said to be a great sign and marvelous on the sea of glass mingled with fire with persons standing on it. Described by the victory they had gotten over the beast, his image, mark, and the number of his name. And by having the harps of God in their hands, and by the song they sung called the Song of Moses and of the Lamb. And so these people, yeah, they had to be murdered to do that. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory by not taking the mark of the beast, they're worshiping his image, and they're standing on the sea of glass having the harps of gold. And so we know they're victorious because they refuse to submit because uh, the beast and, and those guys killed everybody that didn't submit. And so we see back in the throne room in Revelation 4, 5, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were, and there are seven lamps of, not to add, seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. So we, that accounts for the fire and the sea of glass in, in verse six and before the throne, it was a sea of glass likened to crystal. And in the midst of the throne, around about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And we know that is a seraphim, one uh, like a lion, one like a calf or an ox, one like a man and one like a flying eagle. Okay, so we move on to verse 3. And the ones that were harping were singing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, uh, song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And this sounds like the song of the Lamb here. Um, we are told of the song of Moses in Deuteronomy 32, 44. And Moses came and spake all the words of the song in the ears of the people. He and Hosea, the son of Nun. Joshua was also the son of Nun who took over after Moses. Deuteronomy 31, 22, Moses therefore wrote this song the same day and taught it to the children of Israel. So he's saying here, I'm 120 years old. I can't go over into the promised land. Be strong and a good courage. Moses called to Joshua, told him to be strong. The Lord goes before you. He wrote the law, declared it to the priest, said uh, at the end of every seven years, Read this law before Israel. And he's telling the Israelites here, because they'll go a whoring after gods of the strangers of the land. He's warning them, my anger will be kindled against you in that day. I will hide my face. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day and taught it the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua, also the son of Nun, a charge and said, Be strong and of good courage. For thou shalt bring the children of Israel to the land, which I swear unto thee, and I will be with thee. So we see about the song of Moses. Some also say it could be Exodus 15. And uh, people have saying this. Uh, then saying Moses and the children of Israel, this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and rider, his rider, hath thee thrown into the sea. Something like that, anyway. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> I won't take up being a vocalist for a living. But uh, it goes all the way through verse 15 or something like that. But they're singing about their exodus from Egypt and how... God 
part in the Red Sea. Yeah, it goes down to where Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel on a hand, and all the women went after her timbrels and would dance it. Sing yet to ye to the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. So she echoed. Uh, so this is another song of Moses, probably not the one that was sang uh, here in the third verse. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name, for thou art only art holy. All nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgment may manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple, the tab tabernacle, the testimony in heaven was open. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues. And this is like the plagues of Egypt again. And they are clothed in pure and white linen, linen showing their purity like after God and their breasts girded with golden girdles, just like Jesus is. And one of the four beasts gave unto the, and we know that's a seraphim, uh, it doesn't say which, unto the seven angels, seven golden vials full of the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory, glory of God. Some say this is the Shekinah glory. And from his power, no one was able to enter into the temple during this time till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. And so the latter scriptures are self-explanatory. We will move on. We go on to 16. And it says, I heard a great voice coming out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vows of the wrath of God upon the earth. So this chapter gives an account of the pouring out of the seven vials by the angels. Their orders for it are in verse 1. The first angel pours out, the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. A loathsome and malignant painful sword is called it's like a plague of Egypt. And those who have taken the mark of the beast again cannot be saved. The second angel poured his vial upon the sea. And it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. So the sea became as dead. Where with the second trumpet it was only one third of it. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains. So this is fresh water. And they became blood. So all fresh water is destroyed everywhere. They became blood again, like the plagues of Egypt. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of the saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And so we know during the time of the Antichrist and in Babylon, there will be a, a lot of false commerce because of the presence of demons and Satan and the Antichrist. We know that they will destroy the true believers in murdering them. The saints, the prophets, the two witnesses are most likely killed by the Antichrist after he's resurrected. And so... The Lord has given them blood to drink. This is called the blood judgment, and it's a terrible one, and they are worthy because they have shed the blood of the saints and prophets. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. This is the altar beneath which the souls of the martyrs cried and on which the prayers of saints were offered, represented as confirming the testimony to the just dealings of God. True and righteous are thy judgments, O Lord. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and the power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. So you can imagine already these people have a noisome and grievous malignancy, and then the sun starts scorching as if the ozone layer is gone. We know part of it is already. So those who were worshipers of the beast were scorched. They did not repent to give God glory. This is another example in a way the things full of the beneficence of God are turned into powers of sorrow to those who follow evil. And 
they repented not. They blasphemed the name of God. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. Now we must note where that is, which is Babylon. He has set up his religious and political system there. And his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. Remember the first bowl judgment, the malignancy. And then the fourth with the sun. And so they're sore and burn up and sunburnt and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. And why don't they repent? Uh, I believe it's because they are given over after a time when they have given themselves to serving the wrong God and have gone so far. And if they have taken the mark, it's too late anyway. And his kingdom was full of darkness. We have the counterpart of the Egyptian plague here. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand toward heaven that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And so some believe those are going to work to the kings of the earth, the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty or Armageddon where uh, Satan and the Antichrist and the false prophets still try to make war on God and his elect. Here in verse 15, Jesus warns us again, Behold, I come as a thief, meaning unexpectedly. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And I believe that does, a, does not only refer to the night when you might be uh, disrobed sleeping, but I believe it also refers to spiritually, you know, to walk every day in commandments one and two in his love um, and accepting his forgiveness and amazing grace every day. And so keeping our accounts caught up with the Lord Jesus Christ. That way we are not walking naked. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon or Har Mageddon at Mount Gedo, which is said to be the staging area for Armageddon. Okay, Joel 2.2, 2, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong there have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it into the, into the years of many generations. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, Isaiah 24, 6, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. And the seventh angel poured his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And many believe this is the same as it is finished when Christ had finished his mission on the cross. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. So we know this is the most terrible that has ever happened. And the great city, this is Jerusalem, was divided into three parts. And the cities, this is the Gentile cities, of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Because of that earthquake, every island fled away. The mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail. For the plague thereof was exceeding great. 
And so even though things are falling down around them, they just still do not repent. Luke 21, 25, Jesus himself says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity to see and the waves roaring. In Mark 13, 24, but in those days after that tribulation, here we go. After that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Again, there's the Euphrates, which will be dried up by the sixth bowl judgment. Here's Babylon. And now the dots right there. You can see it's right on the Euphrates above the Persian Gulf. And this is where all the com a lot of the commerce will come from during the first half of tribulation. While Antichrist allows Babylon to flourish. And he allows Israel to rebuild the temple here in Jerusalem. So these things will be going on concurrently. Here's our better diagram of the Babylonian Empire. I believe it was bigger all the way to the Black and Caspian Seas. Possibly. There's Babylon again. Armageddon where... They all converge to Megiddo. Here's the seminal verse in Revelation 16. The great city, that's Jerusalem, was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nation fell. So this is all the Gentile cities. Great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And there came one of the seven angels with seven vials, and he saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And we know again from the maps that uh, that's Babylon. Med, Black Sea, Caspian, Persian Gulf, and Red Sea. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the abbot of drunk with the wine of fornication. So he carried me away in the, in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy and having seven heads and ten horns. And we, we know this is the Antichrist, and the Antichrist is supporting the woman, so as he does through the first half of tribulation. And the woman was arrayed in purple, purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and jewels, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And so she has the golden cup and all the royal robes and all of that, but she is a white and sepulcher, full of evil. And upon her forehead in verse 5, was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. And there are some who try to say later that this chapter is about Rome. Wrong. Did you not read verse 5 in capital letters? <laughs> so this chapter contains a vision of a beast and a woman on it and the interpretation of it. One of the seven angels that had the seven vials proposes to John to show him the whore of Babylon, the Jezebel spoken of before, who sits on many waters, with whom the kings, inhabitants of earth, have committed fornication, being intoxicated by her. And so John is carried in his vision to the wilderness. There he sees the woman, and it's on the beast full of with uh, seven heads and ten horns full of blasphemous names by her array in purple and scarlet. She is drunk with the blood of the saints because all of the true believers, the two witnesses, uh, were murdered during the first half of tribulation. The fifth seal saints are of those, those who refuse to bow down and worship the beast and take the mark of the beast. John was filled with great admiration when he saw the woman and the uh, angel was like, 
proposes to uh, remove his astonishment and explain to him the mystery of the woman. Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which made, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. And so we know the beast has supported Babylon. And we know from the previous chapter, Babylon was destroyed. The fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. Babylon was destroyed. Daniel again, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and this is from 13.1 we've already covered. And we know the sea is a reference to the Gentiles. And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And so we know... The beast of the sea is the Antichrist. Daniel 7, 23, thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse or different from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Verse 24, in the ten horns, and we have the key. Daniel does unlock Revelation in a way here. 724 and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and another shall rise after them he shall be different from the first or diverse he shall subdue or murder three kings the little horn or the eighth one i considered the little horns in daniel 7 8 and behold there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots and behold in his horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and am I speaking great things? Abominations. And there's that seminal verse again, 927. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And it is said nowhere else like here in Daniel. Daniel, you're a star. Revelation 9, 1. And I, the fifth angel saw, sounded and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And we know the New American Standard says, Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star from earth which had fallen to the earth, and the key to the shaft of the abyss was given to him. And so I believe this was Satan, because he had already fallen like a star. And I saw, uh, Isaiah says this, and I saw a star, but he said he saw uh Lucifer fall like a star from heaven. Uh, but anyway, this is one reason I believe this could be Satan unlocking the shaft of the abyss to let out the demon locust. And he also could have let out the Antichrist after he was slain by the sword. We know that Satan, the dragon, resurrected the Antichrist. And that's why and uh, the uh, false prophet made the image and caused it to speak and moved and everybody worshiped the beast in its image and took the number of the beast. But we believe a uh, part of this came from that fifth trumpet when the shaft of the abyss was open, possibly Satan unlocked it and allowed the antichrist to come back out, resurrecting him. So there's a Babylon again, Babylon then and now present day Iraq on the Euphrates, there in the ancient Middle East. Mesopotamia, yeah, they show it here. Assyria has always been an enemy. And then Magog over here, Kazakhstan, Eastan, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, yeah, the classic. It's not including Pakistan, but there's Iran right there on the border, and that's who uh, Israel's having trouble with now. 
Here's the kingdom of Judah in old, uh, it, with old the kingdom of Israel above it and how they were separated a bit. We have the Phoenician states in the Assyrian Empire and some of those uh, worshipped idols and we'll get into that in a moment. And so our first mention of Babylon begins in Genesis 10, 8, and Cush began, Nimrod, he began to be a mighty one in the earth. And Cush begat Nimrod. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. And we know what happened there. The Lord thought, you know, Babel means tower or gate to heaven. And so the Lord knew what they were trying to do. And he changed the meaning of Babel to mean confusion or a babel of voices. But anyway, that's your beginning. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. We believe that's what happened to the Antichrist again. He was killed. He is the son of perdition, it says elsewhere. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Here's the mind which has wisdom to seven heads of the seven mountains on which the woman sits. And there are seven kings, five are fallen and one is and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. Uh, Babylon is mentioned 290 times in the Bible. Again, uh, it begins in Genesis 10 when Nimrod founded Babel. God confused the language languages. Nimrod's wife was Semiramis or S E M I R A M I S, Semiramis or Semiramis. She became the first high priestess of idolatry. Her son was called Tammuz, T A M M U Z. And when he had become a man, he was killed by a wild boar. And after 40 days, of his mother's crying, Samarimus. He was raised from the dead. And so it's become a cultic worship of the mother and child began to spread through the world from that time. In Assyria, it's called, they're called Ishtar and Tammuz. In Phoenicia, Astarte and Baal. And the kingdom of Judah had trouble with Astarte and Baal. Egypt, Isis and Horus. In Greece, Aphrodite and Eros, and in Rome, Venus and Cupid. And so they had their own worship liturgy developed from that time. Some of our practices today have come out of those pagan rituals, some say, but they have been transmuted or either to me, these are the false copy rather so we have a whole worship liturgy developed. It is the false copy for the true religion and worship of our Lord Jesus Christ. And here in this liturgy of the false religion of the mother and child, the wafer is offered to the queen of heaven. We'll see this in scripture. They have 40 days of weeping for Tammuz instead of our 40 days of Lent. There is the feast of Ishtar or Tammuz resurrection. It was commemorated by Ishtar eggs or new life for the eggs. Uh, that is done now with Easter eggs. It's a symbol of the fertility goddess, Samaramis. And so they have priestly absolution and sacramental rites, virgins dedicated, purgatory fires, and they say the sign of the cross is really just T for Tammuz. Right. So this is Babylon's counterfeit system of worship. And you see how false it was.
And the beast that was is not, he's the eighth, the seventh, and goes into perdition. So we know he's the son of perdition. Ten horns of the ten kings. They have one mind and give their power and strength unto the beast. They receive power as kings one hour with the beast. We know the beast is empowered by Satan. So in, indirectly they're empowered by Satan, who also empowers the false prophet. They shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And here again, we have mention of Babylon. And he said, the waters which thou sawest where the horse sits are peoples, multitudes, and nations, and tongues. And so we have the reference to the waters or the sea of Gentiles as the people, multitudes, nations, and tongues. The ten horns which thou sawest on the beast, these shall hate the whore or the ten kings. So they so they are given over to God's purpose to destroy Babylon and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For as it said, as I said, God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigns over the kings of, kings of the earth. And so we have the fall of religious Babylon. Let no man deceive you. Second Thessalonians 2, 3. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. We know that is the Antichrist. Who opposes and exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That is the abomination of desolation. Okay, we know in the past that the people in in various places worshipped idols just from this verse, Jeremiah 44, 15. Then all the men which knew that the wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by a great multitude, even all the people that dwelled in the land of Egypt in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, And they were not repentant. As for the word thou hast spoken unto us, we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven. And so you have here mention of Samaramis and to pour out drink offerings to her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of food and were well and saw no evil. And so they went on lamenting the fact. Check this out. Ezekiel 8, 14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. And we know our 40 days of Lent, which is where we strive for spiritual pur purity, the 40 days before Easter. This, in its uh, false religion, Tammuz is the son of Samaramis, and so they're sitting here weeping for him. They're practicing idolatry. And so we know Israel has continued to divide, defy the Lord throughout history. I mean, from Egypt to Babylon. And they continue to follow false gods. And I can't say this is just Israel. Knowing that we all share 99% primate DNA, I would venture that it could have been any people, Adam and Eve could have been any two, and it could have been any people who killed the Lord himself. And in Jeremiah 51, we have an entire chapter, uh, and 50 as well, Isaiah 14, 4, thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased. Revelation 14, 8. And this is our first announcement back in chapter 14. We already covered 
of the fall of Babylon. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen that great city because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Isaiah 13, 19, and Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, Chaldean, excellent as he shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And you go to those places now, the rock looks like it's been melted in the glass. And so we move on to chapter 18. Chapter 18, this chapter gives an account of the fall of Babylon again, but the lamentation of many is included because of the things that have been lost. Uh, the joy of others because it was destroyed. The first angel that declares her fall is described in verse 1 by his original and descending from heaven with great power and the earth was lightened with his glory. Another voice in verse one. Oh, no, it's the same voice. He cried mightily with a strong voice. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And we know from this, Matthew 13, 4, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Jesus is saying this and teaching us the parable of the sower in Matthew. And then he says in verse 19, With anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then cometh the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. And the fact that he understands it not, means the seed takes no root and it's taken away same in mark 4 4 and it came to pass as he sowed some fell by the wayside and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up and again these are a reference to verse 2 and he cried mightily with strong voice saying babylon the great has fallen has fallen and has become a habitation of devils and hold of every foul spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And we know those are demons. Can be demons. Here's Babylon again, the land of Shinar, as we said before. This, this plain of Shinar is where the Tower of Babel was constructed. So Mesopotamia is actually north. Persian Gulf and Iran are east, Magog, Afghanistan, Kazakhstan. And then the, this, the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11 was constructed there. More of the history of Nimrod, how the worship, the false worship of the mother and child came about from some, uh, Samarimus. And one lesson about Babylon is to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him, and we'll see why. And behold, there came a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen, and he answered and said, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, and all the graven images of her God he has broken unto the ground. Isaiah 47, 8. Therefore, hear now this, thou that art given the pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. And so we see here the arrogance of Babylon. Sit thou silent and get thee in the darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kings. 
And so we're still in chapter 18 here. The many references we have here. For the nations, all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, the kings of the earth. And so we read that. And here's the warning to his people in verse four. And I heard another voice saying from heaven, coming out of her, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. She, she, in those bold judgments, Babylon will receive the plagues of Egypt. For her sins have reached the heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. Getting back to chapter 18. Reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she has filled to her double. So we see God has great wrath for Babylon. How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her for she said in her heart, I sin a queen and no more widows shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall utterly be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judged her. The kings of the earth lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. Many standing far off, they're standing far off. Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city. For in one hour is thy judgment come, and the merchants lament. Shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. Gold, silver, precious stones, fine linen, pearls, silk, scarlet, dying wood, ivory, vessels of most precious wood, brass, iron, marble, cinnamon, odors. The point being sheep, horses, chariots, slaves, and souls of men. And those are people. So we see even in this time, slavery will go on. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after departed from thee, and all things which are dainty and goodly are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. All this, the monarchs are lamenting for her. The merchants are lamenting for her. And the mariners or shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors. What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing. Alas, alas, the great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she made desolate. And ye holy apostles and prophets rejoice. Heaven rejoices. For God has revenged you on her and all of the fifth seal saints and all of the saints from tribulation. All those who refuse to take the mark of the beast rejoice, they are told here. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. The voice of harpers, musicians, pipers, trumpeters shall be heard no more at all, and neither craftsmen of whatsoever craft shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of millstones shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints. And in all that were slain upon the earth. Babylon the great is fallen, fallen. And so she has fallen twice. She fell religiously. She has fallen politically. In the land of Shinar of the Chaldeans. We had the parable of the sower. She said, I shall not sit as a widow. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon, sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. The Lord has the Lord rebuke thee harshly, Babylon, rebuke thee and destroy thee. 
because it seems like from the foundation of the world all the way back to Nimrod and Semiramis, the worship of the false worship of the mother and son, all the way back to the beginning, Babel, then Babylon has been a thorn in the side of the Lord. And here he has gotten rid of it. And thou saidst, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. How is the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment. Righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Lamentations 1.1. How does the city sit solitary? That was full of people. How has she become as a widow? She who said she would never be a widow. She that was great among the nations and princess among the provinces, how she has become tributary. And so we have seen the destruction of Babylon religiously and politically. We have had the seven bold judgments, how they destroyed Babylon and helped reclaim the Lord, that which is his on the earth. One of the biggest lessons was in her was found the blood of prophets and the saints and of all that were slain on the earth. Because the first half of tribulation, the true believers will be slain and any they can catch after the abomination of desolation that will not take the mark of the beast and worship him in the false image, those will be slain. Thank you, Lord. We praise your holy name. Thank you for helping helping us divide the word of truth. We hope we have done so without adding or take away, rightly dividing the word of truth, being instructed by the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, Lord, to bring all things into remembrance. Please bless everyone mightily who has watched this. Help us all to keep commandments one and two fervently and fervently repent of all sin, depending upon thy amazing grace daily, Lord. Thank you for your many blessings. In your sacred heart and name, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for watching today, and I hope this helps. We appreciate you. God bless you.